Bună seara, dobre vecher, good evening. Uh, we are happy to continue with the public program of Eduard 2020 project, uh, which uh, includes uh, various uh, workshops, um, uh, uh, presentations, uh, uh, different events, and also uh, international curatorial uh, and uh, uh, contemporary art uh, course, uh, which hosts uh, guests from uh, Moldova, of course, but also from uh, uh, neighboring countries and uh, the region, but both like uh, from former Soviet republics and uh, Western Europe. So we are happy to see tonight uh, Bermet Borobaeva, who is uh, 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 cultural uh, activist and environmental activist and artist uh, who will uh, share with us uh, her experience of uh, work uh, uh, with uh, she will share with us her artistic practice which is uh, directly linked to in various environmental issues. Permet, uh, we are very happy to see you here in Chisinau. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, uh, the presentation will be around one hour, one and a half hours, and it can be followed by questions. So everyone is welcome to uh, write questions both in the chat or uh, on paper and then uh, share them with us. Uh, thank you. And Bermet, I leave you the microphone. Um, super great. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bermet. I'm uh, super excited to be here. Um, and I, I really uh, love uh, Kishinau. And yeah, thank you, Vladimir, uh, to invite me and uh, with me uh, all our school of uh, Bishkek uh, School of Contemporary Art came. <laughs> So, and I'm really happy to uh, welcome everyone. And we have very intensive uh, schedule uh, for these days. And yeah, maybe, and yeah, to, today I will start with more like e ecological practices, art uh, and environmental practices. And tomorrow I will continue. Uh, speaking more about like uh, political issues about food production uh, art and ecology yeah and uh, yeah if if you will have any questions uh, by just now or during the lectures uh, you can really freely interrupt me uh, and also we maybe yeah uh, and it's also we will have uh, this presentation in English, but if if you feel comfortable to ask questions in Russian or <laughs> any languages, I don't know. Uh, so you also can really do this. Uh, no, no. Um, I will share uh, the screen and yeah, um, so um, my experience uh, in environmental activism in Bishkek uh, where we have different stories and uh, we will just make a round uh, from as I started in Bishkek and made some kind uh, trip around the world and came back uh, to Bishkek. So, uh, it will be like, uh, so I, I want uh, to have this presentation more like formally uh, to show how, um, uh, to share just my experience and uh, maybe, maybe we can together develop and discuss uh, these topics. Uh, so um, several uh, years ago, like 
uh, 10 years ago, we, uh, I was studied at uh, School of Contemporary Art uh, that was um, initiated by two artists, uh, Gulnara uh, Kasmaliva and Murat Beg Jumali. And this year, we also uh, decided to restart the school with um, students, uh, ex-students. Uh, and we have uh, another open call uh, that was, uh, and some of our students and colleagues uh, today also here with us. Uh, so, and it was a very interesting time uh, 10 years ago like even 11 years ago. So we had a very informal uh, school of contemporary art. Uh, we had studio of artists uh, and uh, uh, some of our, um, some of students were more co connected with art. So it was a uh, student of art uh, college, uh, art university. Uh, but me and uh, my colleague uh, Alima and Diana, we were out of uh, the art, like totally. Uh, I, uh, we with Alima studied with uh, political science and Diana and history. But anyway, we like occasionally joined this group and started this uh, very huge journey to contemporary art. Uh, so and uh, first. Um, event after we study, we decided to make a uh, like festival. Uh, it's, it's called uh, mini eco festival trash uh, because we were really aware about uh, ecological issues and uh, we, cho uh, we chose a uh, space uh, called uh, Osh Bazar, who was in Bishkek uh, knows that it's uh, uh, especially 10 years ago, it was super like dirty place. I mean, uh, to go to Oshski, it's it was mean like people just uh, do not want to go actually there uh, one more time if they no need it. So it was very chaotic uh, market, uh, not in the center of uh, city. And we decided to make public art festival just there uh so it's uh, yeah it's it's uh, very uh, it's very big and uh, crowded and we actually uh, had some kind of research before so it was a river uh, that was like really full amount of garbage uh, and uh, our we as a group decided to make uh, some kind of artworks and uh, our uh, like group mate uh, Altenai, she was uh, studying fashion design and she designed uh, some kind of um, dresses like fashionable dress and made some kind of uh, fashion week uh, i don't know uh, it at this market uh, and uh, yeah, it it was really like now I can think it was very like um, I don't know people really was a bit surprised and thought we like a crazy. Uh, but uh, I really liked uh, some of the work uh, that were really like collaborative with um, people who really work there every day. Uh, for example, Nikolai Cherkasov made this uh, system because a lot of, there are a lot of women who sell some kind of pira, pirashki, so it's like some food, uh, and it's uh, quite uh, not good, you know, to take uh, this and eat so like without uh, washing hands. So and they sell it from this uh, actually. Uh, baby carrying system, <laughs> Kaliaska, I would say. Uh, so, and he put inside the bottle of water, and you can wash your hands and uh, take uh, food. Uh, and I think today it's also very actual. And another um, work was uh, made by Maksat uh, Bolodbek. Uh, she, 
uh, he wanted to, to create a space where people like just passing by can join uh, this creative process and he put some kind of paint and people can together paint this uh, bridge uh, and so it was very interesting because people really like involved to the process they even started to write their names of course but anyway uh, they did it together and it was some kind also changing uh, the space uh, so, and we also made some kind of parade, and so there is, was also my work, Dragon, uh, Water Dragon, uh, that uh, uh, water is like a uh, uh, dragon symbol of uh, water, and anyway, for uh, ancient times, the water was like really a sacral meaning, and today we have uh, this dirty river, so that's why we wanted to some kind of um, renovate these uh, notions. And we made this uh, like parade uh, with uh, different slogans like Orski Cvitiot i Pachnit, that uh, this market Orski like uh, fl uh, flooring. Uh, And it was really like uh, interesting with music and these also slogans. Um, and uh, also like uh, there is was like uh, this slogan, Atvichai uh, Zachisti Bazar. And uh, another work was made uh, with, uh, uh, by uh, Dmitry Petrovsky. Uh, Daiti uh, Hodu Parahodu. It uh, was like, uh, so you see this uh, river uh, because it's uh, this river, it was really like a line between two, two uh, municipalities. So um, one said that they have to clean it, and another says they have to clean it, and in the end, no one cleaned. And it was like a mountain of garbage with, you know, with like uh, uh, animal skins and these like broken glasses. So we wanted to uh, even clean it by ourselves. But uh, the, um, one uh, municipality uh, is this like MCS, uh, it's like Ministry of um, Extraordinary Affairs. So they say that it's uh, really like dangerous to go and clean by ourselves this river because it can be have some diseases or etc some rats so and that's why we uh, they, they made it by themselves so they put several containers uh, to like really like take it out and for us it was like so unbelievable that it's like even really possible that like few artists come and can really like change something in our like everyday practices. And before we made research on this spot, um, this uh, bridge was really like dirty. And uh, for example, mother with children, uh, they took him uh, closer and say like, let's go faster. So, uh, and after this project, uh, everyone stopped and see uh, to this work of uh, Dmitry Petrovsky. So it's uh, very, mm, looks like uh, this uh, symbol, very naive, uh, childish uh, boats. And they like um, goes and stopped and crushed uh, by these mountains of garbage. And this, you hear, uh, you can see how uh, how far it was, uh, how big it was. So, and then it was like clean. And for everyone, uh, for us as a student, was like really huge experience. Uh, we were really like inspired, I think, uh, by Joseph Boyce and his um, performance uh, about a thousand oaks in Castle Documenta. 
So we tried to develop this topic and we decided to make uh, another trash festival uh, that was already in front of the museum and it was dedicated to deforestation uh, because it's really big issue that we have now uh, with losing trees. Uh, so it was uh, one Dutch uh, artist group. They also made some kind of photos of, from like uh, people like a tree and uh, give lecture. So uh, we also wanted to mention that the Trash Festival is fo format when some artists, uh, contemporary artists uh, can collaborate with different initiatives. And for example, uh, also using format with the uh, lectures and uh, workshop, or even some of uh, people went to the mountains and clean, so make some kind of subotnik. And it's, uh, I think it's very nice. Uh, and here it's like uh, work uh, by Nikolai Cherkasov. I still have uh, no idea, but I have already cut a tree. So he has a, a tree in a garden and he wanted to like, I mean, I think it was like idea to cut it be, because it was maybe old. And he just filmed uh, how he cut a tree. And it's also like, I think uh, idea that we are uh, cutting trees, but do not think about it actually. And uh, another, uh, work by Dmitry Petrovsky, Point of View. So you can, uh, here you can see some spots, but if you will see from another side, it will be uh, really tree with these spots. And another uh, um, work uh, by Gulnar and Murat, uh, Reflection. So it's just one tree with uh, two mirrors from two sides. And it's really like making infinity uh, forest just from one tree. Uh, and uh, here is a work by Anatoly Kolesnikov. He unfortunately uh, passed by, but yeah, he, we really love uh, his work. And it was always about uh, milit like this uh, military power against like nature power and yeah he created a tree uh, from this uh, military stuff and also from uh, horns of animals and uh, there is another um, work by uh, Dmitry Petrovsky and Sergei Keller, uh, this uh, three, uh, tree, and it was made just from tapes and stickers. And for us, it was very surprising that uh, these uh, uh, stickers became like, uh, th that people start to um, uh, leave some messages on it. So it was like even point where people can make a date or something like this. And it was super bright. And when people just pass by the museum, they always can see this tree. And it was another uh, workshop by Andrea Studel uh, on like a uh, street uh, life theater. Uh, not performance, a uh, workshop. And together with students, uh, they were like working on the story uh, that was visible on um, on the wall of the museum, our state museum. Uh, so it was dedicated to, it was like called um, Burning of Manas, a national hero. Uh, and the idea was that uh, like our, um, uh, so before the people lived like more in harmony uh, with nature and uh, they w wanted just uh, make some very simple storytelling uh, with pictures and etc. 
So, and it was very nice to have it like after like exhibition opening, we had this performance. Um, and yeah, it was uh, super nice to, uh, because it uh, was also very, um, it's like life and also with music. And I just put uh, several works uh, here that uh, this was made by Aida Sulova. It's not our project, but I also wanted to put something that was produced not by our school. So she like bombed uh, at night some kind of uh, trash cans and idea that uh, that um, we um, our home ends by our doors and we threw away our trash like but anyway it's uh, close to us yes it uh, stays in our rayon in our city and so it's like anyway we uh, uh, like eat like consume it so we just stay with all our garbage that we are producing and so, and it's another uh, exhibition, uh, like a first uh, Central Asian uh, contemporary art uh, exhibition that we decided uh, to uh, dedicate to problem of uh, energy. Uh, so we had uh, this president, uh, Bakiev, and it was started like turning off uh, electricity. So we had a schedule at home when we do not have electricity. And it was uh, super weird uh, because we actually uh, have uh, enough potential, hetero potential and, and we called it like a Fkilvikl, turn on, turn off exhibition. And uh, there was uh, different works. Uh, so, and it was in really interesting space uh, underground of main square. It's um, a yeah, very uh, big space and it worked by also Anatoly. Uh, I don't know uh, uh, for it was like used uh, for special like um, underground space even maybe some so it's like a legend that some people were killed uh, here because of um, by ch uh, Czechs like in Soviet time but actually I don't know um, and mm, so we pr uh, made uh, our work with a student um, like my colleagues uh, it was um, escape from freedom about uh, that uh, we have very like, like one of the prominent uh, sphere of Kyrgyzstan it's uh, tourism but we really like exploitate uh, it like with nothing so it was just video about one eagle who was used for this like uh, consumption culture there was like tourist can make a photo with this eagle and and when you see this video you really feel like he's really suffering and yeah it's all this question okay for local people it's of course question of survival but maybe we should like organize it somehow to make it like more uh, with other conditions and etc uh, so, and uh, after after this school and working several periods in um, uh, Kyrgyzstan, I moved uh, to study uh, to Moscow and I had some practices there. Uh, so, and uh, I studied to work as an assistant of general direction, uh, director of at the Center for Creative Industries uh, Fabrica. And my friends, like uh, Sergei Rishetin, he, with colleagues, uh, colleagues made a festival, uh, uh, Echo Cup. Uh, so, um, and I, want, I, I wanted also to join this festival because actually I was a student and I didn't even have a 
chance to go to these all nice movies because uh, tickets for me was quite like expensive. And I told him, okay, let's make uh, this Echo Cup at Fabrica because I thought maybe in this time I can show this old movie, but unfortunately I didn't because I was too busy to make it, to organize everything. But anyway, uh, one thing we did, it's a screening waste cooking uh, movie, a documentary film that was made one by uh, Austrian activists and filmmakers and we decided during uh, people see the movie we will organize some kitchen and prepare some dinners from like leftovers people do not eat and actually I have to organize also all this process and it was like for me, it was really weird because when I was a student in Moscow, I was really like always hungry. It was like, um, I don't know, when you come, uh, when you come with friends to cafe and you cannot uh, eat because it's expensive and it's always like problem of um, even you don't have enough food. And we prepared some hummus, uh, some pilaf uh, from uh, vegetables, and some smoothie. So it was a really nice dinner made by uh, Svetlana Hakimova. She's super great chief. And people, after they saw this movie, they came uh, to dinner and was super surprised how uh, how many food is wasted and how delicious it can be because it was super delicious and yeah and that's why I was like really thinking about this and um, how it's really possible that uh, so many food is wasted and uh, I might uh, I, I spoke with um, chief of one um, uh, like uh, informational um, news uh, agency, uh, Echo, uh, Zdravcom. So we agreed with her that I thought, how I, if we have so many food thrown in Moscow, can I survive, survive one month without any grocery, without any supermarkets and cafe? And so we started like an uh, experiment that how it's uh, like, will I, will I die from hunger or not? Actually, for me, it was a question like this, uh, because it was, um, uh, I felt a very big fear uh, because uh, I was really afraid because you, how it's, uh, for me, it was unclear how it's possible to live one month in Moscow in this expensive city and do not buy uh, food in supermarket. So, and after even, I don't know, half a year, I wrote here, so let's start experiment, I'm ready. And I still was working on this uh, factory. So, I mean, uh, that's why it's uh, also, um, I think, good for experiment because I was in that time full day employee. So I, I had work like from 11 to seven and yeah, and any other activities I have to do out of this time. And first uh, was a uh, task for me that was like to check what I have inside the fridge. And I discovered that actually I have already a lot of uh, food that was spoiling. Uh, so it was some bread and some dull i don't know so different kind of things that i was like too busy to prepare or i didn't like a taste or whatever and actually all this food was like mm, bought and yeah because i didn't have so many mm, um, resources to buy food so it was even pity to throw it away and uh, I have to start different point where I can 
get a food. And one was this uh, market that where you can buy like uh, super cheap stuff that was like uh, some kind of leftovers. And yeah, when when I bought these peaches, one woman cried me that, why are you buying it? It's like garbage. So, and uh, yeah, it was some kind of banana, but sometimes people gave me like, a, even like for free. But for me, it's even doesn't, it wasn't matter like uh, I spent money for this or not. So the main reason was like, uh, save uh, this food and so it and in this time I discovered that I have I took a lot of food that uh, not like uh, it's so much for me and I have to cook it like every uh, in time because in several hours for next day it will be not like already eatable and so I tried to make some uh, dishes like this uh, soup, uh, tomato soup, and so and one uh, girl there is like a food sharing group in Moscow. So she uh, asked. So this uh, vegetables uh, one uh, person from market just gave me, and I baked it to them, and it was super nice as well. And I really st uh, saw a lot of like food food treasure. And it was a bit pity for me because uh, it be, before you threw it uh, to the trash can, it's really something that you can deal with, with it and it will be okay. But after it not. And anyway, uh, it should be some kind of compost on these markets, but not uh, having it like this. And so I took some peaches and also it was really possible to cook some jam or whatever uh, so and it's I really uh, came to this uh, idea that uh, uh, that I saw already that eating is political act so you when you come to these supermarkets you never mm, it's it's really like comfortable comfortable conditions created. So you have always these uh, shelves with a uh, nice food. And we even do not think how uh, problematic it is. So because to produce this food, we have a lot of uh, deforestations and a lot of ecological problems. And also these workers, uh, really like uh, have to work more than 12 hours per day so for them it's really like super hard life so and after and before supermarket as clara already told that it's like uh, you cannot um, maybe uh, so big amount of harvesting even do not go to supermarket because uh, this uh, chain, they do not accept uh, ugly, how they say it, ugly vegetables and fruit. So if it's not like looks nice and if it's like uh, not good form, uh, it not uh, enough, well, and, uh, very beautifully shaped, so it shouldn't come to the market. And I call it like uh, food uh, fascism because it's also some kind of uh, uh, so you do not selection, but anyway, these fruits the same have uh, the same vitamins and like um, it can really like eatable. Do not look at the, the shapes. Uh, so and um, and it's really like big problem because uh, officially with like a United Nations statistic, uh, like one third of uh, all produced food like are wasted. So can you imagine like you buy like three packages of food in supermarket and like one of them you just threw it away like immediately to trash can. So it's really like. Uh, 
inefficient at least and uh, maybe even more wasted. So we decided to make an initiative group uh, with uh, Nurgula Swanova and Nelia Jumumbaeva, created like just Facebook uh, groups that people can share their food and I don't know. And it was some people even, they, for example, collected apricots uh, at Isikul and sent it by cars to Vishkek to some, uh, and we uh, like, uh, for some kind of children uh, schools, and uh, we have we agreed with some cafes in city, and we like every day collect food. So and it's very nice food, like some cakes and but there are like non-sellers and uh, anyway every day they they have this uh, because yeah. It's like limited time of selling, and after it should be like wasted. Uh, and we give it like to uh, center of homeless people. Um, so and um, uh, so after like everything came to my mind and like experience, I was like already. Um, aware uh, that it's really like huge amount of uh, problems in this uh, sphere and I mm, I felt um, myself very alienated of working as a cultural art manager and in at Fabrica so we had ex actually we made a lot of um, interesting work at Fabrica and I really love it. It's, it's one of my favorite places in Moscow. Uh, but I decided to left this position and this super comfortable like conditions of being privileged to work there and just continue to with this food and ecological activism. So I started to uh, uh, even work as a cook at Moscow Cafe and it was also different, uh, uh, very different experience what I had before in my life because I have to come for work like at 6.30 every day and work until maybe, I don't know, at 8 p.m. or if I come for at 8 a.m to work, I have to work until the midnight. So, and it was super like heavy job with uh, like, I don't know, with very dangerous conditions. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, and first um, they asked me to do not put sign on my uh, labor agreement. And I really like discovered a lot of uh, labor exploitation, mostly uh, it's uh, labor uh, people from Central Asia who work in Moscow. And with uh, Polina Nikitina, we decided to make uh, comics about invisible labor of uh, people, uh, of migrants. And yeah, because it, and this comics is dedicated to Artik uh, who was actually died. Uh, he worked as a courier and like after like 11 works uh, working without any stop, uh, he had heart attack. And for us, it's like tragedy, but we, we see only glamorous side of these food delivery services. And for us, we like sitting at home and saying like, maybe we should have some pizza and etc. So it's something how this um, like uberizations grows. Uh, so you can find this uh, comics, Ya Yida, I food and at Facebook or Instagram. And it's uh, just, showing two sides of this problem. And here also the comics uh, about how I worked in this uh, cafe. Uh, so it's uh, like also for us, it's very nice to come to cafe and have a very good time with our friends. But inside when we have like this 
see to these internal issues and how it's like system produced. And for example, one third of uh, GDP of Kyrgyzstan, it's uh, migrant money transfers. So people work there in really like hard conditions to send money to their like parents or children that are in Kyrgyzstan. Uh, so, and yeah, and I continued this, um, uh, this uh, activism alone now is uh, because Polina now is not, is not able to work on this project and this one, uh, another issue dedicated to this uh, COVID uh, because when it was like closed down everything, so but some building construction will continue and it was different and it was case when um, one truck just uh, fell on one worker. So it was like big issues in Moscow as well, but it's always showing that uh, work is really like unprotected, like at all. And actually do not, anyone do not care. And, but we have like, I also wanted to show another side that uh, this story told uh, by my friend, an artist, uh, Chingis Saidarov, who works, worked in Moscow uh, as a courier and, uh, because they had this very strong uh, uh, restrictions, he wears his uh, suit uh, and just walk on the city. So, because anyone will stop him. Um, and it was really like um, super cool when uh, this courier decided to make some kind of pro professional union. So delivery club, like, um, also delivery system in Moscow, they, uh, this, uh, they have to pay the workers like nine million rubles. Like it was like their salary debts and they didn't get their money. So they made uh, some kind of uh, protest and will like quite succeed. And, and, and was a, uh, another case that actually do not connect it to the, um, environmental issues, but I put it here because I wanted to share that uh, we had some kind of mobile application uh, school of migrants. So it's also available. And yeah, you can learn how to like behave yourself if you will be, for example, stopped by police or need like cross the borders. We, we still are working on it, but um, yeah, we have one part already. And so we uh, turn back to uh, dictionary of food sharing. It's also possible to see it online. And this was um, created for the project of laboratory seed, death, sadness, and love. Uh, and um, yeah, it was uh, maybe, you know, it like uh, lab uh, sea. Uh, that is located in Bishkek and they invited me to the project where I was like also telling about my experience and also uh, made this dictionary and uh, making these uh, pictures that really like showing different uh, part where we can like uh, through food. So it's like from harvesting, in production, in delivering, in uh, like selling, in like hotels, at home, in even in an air. For example, this is all like flights. They have to like come, uh, give food and some of it they also have to throw it away. So it's like also like some kind of um, visual guide on how we, how food is wasted, like every day, thousands of tons. Uh, so another project is, was really like interrupted with uh, lockdown. We had the uh, idea, 
uh, this Valent Rada Valentina Kazu to make an uh, exhibition, Ki in Ki Aldama. So it was planned that we have uh, exhibition in bus. So for us, it was very important to make this, to put alternative uh, to uh, like private uh, automobiles and to uh, highlight the meaning of public transportation because it's very big issues how we can uh, develop it and etc. So we wanted to make an uh, exhibition just inside the bus. So we, we made open call, but I hope maybe next year we will be uh, do it. So and we wanted to make uh, part of exhibition on. Um, uh, on bus stop uh, because people just also waiting bus there and it's also possible to see we had example like uh, some kind of like this so but we didn't want it to have something like this but anyway we wanted to create something more comfortable that you saw before uh, and it's some kind of yeah, and it also was like some kind of modeling, uh, how we, like, yeah, another reality, how we can like also work, deal with this and play. Uh, so, and uh, uh, yeah, it's a uh, it's, uh, very um, big issues in the city. Uh, because actually what, everything you can touch, it's uh, have really like strong ecological ground under this. And this uh, video, uh, North-South, I made uh, in period of lockdown as well. Uh, it was just one uh, single trip from my home through this uh, one of the biggest market, Dordoi to the sub, uh, it's even not suburbs of Bishkek, but another part of Bishkek that really like, um, yeah, so you, you can see this uh, empty market. It's really like source of um, living for like more than 300,000 people. So it's really huge and people have even like sometimes daily work and like several months without, like two months without uh, this market, they, it was really like severe stories. And I went uh, to this sub or uh, this Altin Kazik um, uh, place uh, and it was on the very beautiful uh, coast. Uh, uh, of our cha and and people live near the biggest uh, city uh, garbage field so you you have really like very nice uh, uh, water place and like uh, from another side you have this uh, field and it's super toxic you can see this lake it's a filtrat and it's like the all um, water and other stuff came to one and made some one lake. And it's like, and in our municipalities, they really do not take care. So for me, it was really important to make this uh, video. I don't know, do we have time to show it? But I think I can make some links and yeah, you can see it. Just so, and uh, one of the last project, it was um, Bishkek smoke action. So it started as a like flash mob. So yeah, after this, uh, all uh, trips, when I came to Bishkek just for holidays and for exhibition of Lapsi, so I discovered at the conference uh, that uh, Bishkek uh, came to the rate that as a, the first place at the rate of uh, the dirtiest uh, air, air polluted place. 
ICT. For me, it was like, uh, I don't know, a uh, shock because uh, Bishkek, like very um, known uh, when it's like green city. And uh, this, when we have this air pollution, it's uh, like, yeah, it's very dangerous. I think we will have uh, one um, workshop as well with Anna Popa, so you can join there next week. And I will really like, um, precise speak about it, but now I just wanted to show you yeah, some videos. Uh, yeah. So, and it, uh, yeah, it, it was like uh, just the interesting format. Uh, it's important to feel you like an, uh, uh, you like actor. And uh, it was also important for me that it's like not only exhibition, it's like not art exhibition, but also really like political protest. We had really like uh, this format of like uh, street rally. So, and uh, you can see like ex uh, exposition and people, and for example, this work uh, by she wanted to sell uh, air, just like elite air. Uh, and we discovered that in Autsam, uh, like American University uh, in Bishkek, they had these uh, balloons. She wanted to just, we bought some kind of uh, balloons and yeah, to try to sell them. But before we saw this big installation dedicated to this uh, day, Valentine Day, so we just take all these balloons uh, for our exhibition, and it was really like first like a recycling kit. But anyway, it was uh, super nice because it's really take a lot of attention of media and etc. Because I think uh, it's very important to attract media attention. Uh, I don't know, do you have any sound on this? <laughs> because uh, no, I think don't. I don't. No. Da, наверно, because I, I turn it. Yeah, and it was... Ah, da, you know. Я никого не слышала, оказывается. Ага. А, окей. Я это the last uh, video. I think it's a bit we complicated to Да, it's uh, our uh, very uh, important and famous artist Dolan Chaparov and he made uh, some kind of performance he just came and wanted to be like um, uh, this uh, uh, shaman and try to make a wind, like ask to wind come to flow, uh, to take out all this uh, polluted air. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Я уже чувствую, что воздух веет начинает. Ну, по идее, должен с тобой. Ну, не знаю, может, полчаса там все
Yeah, so it's um, only uh, finishing for today for this, this presenting, but yes. And tomorrow I think I will tell more about my like, international project and we can also discuss more like political aspect, but today I wanted to show how we like work with this topic because it's very important to have this different expertise you like because I, I have uh, some experience like uh, in art and also I studied political science and yeah I work with ecology so if it's something that make it like uh, visible that when you like combine and collect different uh, direction and work with like really like multi-dimensional structures. So maybe if you have any questions, we can continue with questions. Da. Is it the same in the previous hour here in China? Central, Piazza Centrale, I mean? Yeah, but I think it's um, more chaotic and I think maybe it's bigger a, a bit. But Piazza Centrale is like located in the center of Chisinau, but Oshsky Rinek is like outside and it's really like very how to say it looks like where it can be so many like criminals or i don't know it's very you know when you come there it's there is no rules it's like anarchy I mean, and maybe there is some kind of organizational structure but it looks like that there is no any rules and i don't know people like normally do not like to go there but sometimes they have to because you can find like more cheap products there. Um, yeah, but just mostly observing. But now, I, I mean, it's like was 10 years ago. And of course, now we were like, totally will behave not like this. But yeah, it's like, anyway, it's like very safe. Uh, in. But yeah, people, if they do not like something, they can be very aggressive. But in that case, uh, they were like a bit surprised, mostly, and involved. Yeah, it was like a flash. I mean, we made the, this uh, festival and just go. I mean, we didn't. But yeah, we have this uh, some kind of uh, access uh, some kind of uh, project that stayed there and it was super great. I guess it changed in the Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's changing because they started to um, remove some um, places and just build some big supermarket in their place so it's like yeah it's like gentrification i don't know it's like urbanization comes so they just do not leave these spots and just build huge uh, gigantic uh, shops where like trade is super organized so you have to already pay more rent so they don't keep the uh, cheap price in the... No, it's like already like a shop. Yeah, my question. No. No. My question would be, 
Um, how can you define your art practice and the activist practice? Maybe shortly. Do you mm -hmm. have any? Can you highlight some differences, or maybe, or maybe tools you use in one case or in another case? What makes them different? Yeah, really, I do not like try to identify myself as an activist. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. So I really don't like identify myself as an activist. So if I do something like that I shared, it's I doing like mostly as an artist or curator. Or researcher, so I don't have this like activist shelf. I don't know how to say, it, but uh, because for me it's uh, like poor art, not like activist. Because for me it's I I just imagine art, the contemporary art now like this, and yeah, well, for example, this Bishkek smoke flash mob or etc. It can be like people identify as an activist work, but I don't know, I don't want to be activist because I even cannot understand what does it mean activist, you know, I feel that we are quite all like very active, can be like active like citizens and even to come to this action, it's you already do like some kind of activism and yeah, for me it's more connected with art and for example this um, project with the garbage uh, field it's mostly as a, i'm doing as a researcher like working with the urban environment because we made uh, with other expert groups to this uh, ex excursion and we going uh, to make some kind of analysis, really like political analysis of what they happening and we ask it to take to send us all documentation. So we are reading this documentation and giving our expert analysis. So and I see it like more effective and yeah and um, I, I understand this um, difference that it can be art and activism, but I think, uh, yeah, and for example, activists can use art as a, like a tool. Um, and I'm okay with this, uh, but I really like to put it like uh, more to art because it's just political art for me not like activist work, like activism. Maybe I ask. Um, but when you speak of political art, uh, can you maybe open a little bit more it in the context of Kyrgyzstan or Bishkek? How mm. did it, like, when did it start? Or uh, like if we speak of political art and its origins. Because in our region, traditionally, the school of art is very, mm -hmm. it's classical, traditional, and uh, is based on this realism mm -hmm. style. When you, like, you got in touch with political art, I believe, through artist school of art, maybe, but maybe there were other uh, moments when you, sort of uh, mm, absorbed it or, or started to use it to elaborate more on this. Yeah, I think as I didn't have this like of classic education in art, I had uh, like 10 years of political science. My education is like, uh, political analysis and public policy. Uh, so for me, it was not like I had uh, some experience just painting or making sculptures. It, of course, started with the School of Contemporary Art Artist. And we had these uh, festivals, ecological festivals, but 
after and after. So, I mean, I saw you how I made myself like more radical. And uh, yeah, because uh, last thing that we did, it was it was a trip to Kadamjai. They had uh, really like, it's, uh, they were, there was a factory uh, that was pro producing uh, like sur surma, SG, it's like metal. And uh, it was made in Soviet time, but now it's like, it was information that it was like a bankrupt. And it was really like uh, something that you cannot uh, believe. And I went to this, uh, it's very remote city, quite far near, that on the border with Taj Uzbekistan and Tajikistan. And I spoke with uh, workers and they told me absolutely another thing that we had in mass media. And they really like wanted to keep this factory and continue to work. And uh, this like it's a special administrator from like that was um, from the state, um, recognized by state and uh, God and judge uh, court and court. And uh, yeah. And we tried to search and I spoke with people and it was really like, and I understand one day, one time that it's really like, you know, uh, like black raiders. So they really like to try to sell it, to like take it and sell it like very cheap for themselves and then sell it on market price. And I think it's like billions, uh, Songs uh, like difference, and yeah, we tried to, and we made the, some kind. We help it to make some kind of application to general like this investigation office. So, uh, and it's really like something that super like can be dangerous because you know it's something that normally people do not make. But yeah, people supported this uh, application. There, it was like near 60 uh, signs on it, and also workers also signed it. And yeah, it's problems that we have this fear, and we're really like afraid. But when you're alone, it's really like case. But uh, when we can share this information, seek these people, and really like keep us strong together. It's possible to change something. Because uh, otherwise, if you do not have support even from these workers, it, it can be everything ruined. And for me, it's only way now to act politically. Because when you act just I don't know, very abstractly or even even with art. It's for me it's already not enough. And I see what is happening in our like life with this whole uh, violence and um, I don't know breaking all the rules who did by our government. It's really like fuck why why we should like continue to keep them, you know, and even if we do not have make more, at least we can make some troubles for them. And I say, okay, we will do this. And we really like writing some papers. And of course it's like also useless, but anyway, we doing it and we have experience. And we also changing discourse, so we, showing people that it's possible. If we do not like our city mayor, so let's just uh, do whatever what we can just to not kill him, but to give him uh, go out, you know, and yeah. And it's, um, I think uh, it's like also matter of patience. We like, 
uh, thinking always, okay, it's not so bad, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I don't want to deal with all this dirty politics and etc. I have children, I don't know, I don't really care. Uh, and that's why it's not changing anything. And I really like now we have like different initiatives in Bishkek, like really like uh, ordinary citizens, and they try to uh, fight against, uh, like for example, this, uh, this um, how to say, touch as a striker. Yeah, desertification and any kind of problem so it's like people just gather and they do something and with this smoke i think it was also the case that uh, it was problem but it was not visible and when like activists they ask this uh, prime minister or city mayor they told them hmm, we don't have this problem what you should ca what can you do with it you know and yeah uh, and as I saw about uh, show about food, it's also very political issues, you know. And what we are eating now, I think most of the food we really can waste because it's really unhealthy. I mean, but of course, uh, I don't like it to be wasted. But I, if I want it, to, will be not produced because for these resources, using everything, we can like produce very normal food and everyone can be like not hungry and it's a question about changing cities and uh, changing our landscape of openness for such practices like a food for example uh, uh, during uh, next uh, our activity with the Bishkek Contemporary Art School we have uh, meeting with active, uh, artists from Chicago and they made the open kitchen in uh, Chicago. So it's also a case uh, when we have public space in cities that really need for artists like this patio, you know, where uh, people uh, can really work uh, as an artist, can produce uh, very like important cultural intellectual program uh, products we call it like very commercial but anyway it's something that uh, very like necessary and people just like kick out uh, these artists and cultural workers and where they can like live you know where they can work and it's always a question of uh, this matter like public uh, property and private property because government protect now only private property you know if you come and i don't know try to um, take uh, some private property the police immediately will arrest you you know but if you take in private property you're like a hero because you take some kind of park and put there some kind of uh, high scrapers and build, I don't know, um, so new supermarket instead of, uh, I don't know, theater or cinema. Yeah, you like a cool entrepreneur, so like businessman, you, I don't know, super nice guy and people will come, uh, this artist and come and ask you money to make his <laughs> the exhibition and then he, he give you this money okay um, maybe he's not so bad guy you know how it's uh, this art system work and all system work so and when I went to this um, park um, uh, how to say Delina Ross uh, so it was uh, cave uh, for basketball like playing but it was like closed and i don't know it's like public uh, property it's a public park why who the person who built all these sport uh, stadiums closed it for public i have no idea because i thought maybe they tried to i don't know sell some time and you 
pay money and play, but why we should pay for public using public space? And I don't know it's and it's something that we always uh, should question. Uh, and yeah, of course, I know the Oprah do a lot on this uh, direction, but anyway, I think it's also very important this critical mass, you know, when only like Vladimir <laughs> going <laughs> in Chisinau and saying, oh, it's not, it's, it should be public, it should, shouldn't be private, it's not work actually, you know, but if may, maybe even thousand people, because they really can use it and come and it's already been another um, conversation, you know, and it's it's important. Just people feel that it's ours and it should be public. And uh, and it's for example uh, this uh, system, this cafe. It's also uh, like reason to commercialize this topic. I mean, they sell food that like maybe in cafe and maybe like 10 times more um, expensive than it can be, you know, but it's organized a uh, very other way and you really um, can organize in city uh, all the delivering system, all like um, food uh, points that it can be accessible for people without uh, this uh, chain. Uh, with entrepreneurs, actually, it's it's all, all everything is possible, and that's why uh, I want I want always to speak about this and yeah, pay attention to this problem. Yeah, and also food is something that you can like really tell um, about with all people because everyone should eat, and we cannot avoid this. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't want to privatize the whole discussion, so if anyone else is <laughs> willing to ask questions, um, I, you want? I really, really like uh, your work and thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I'm curious, what do you think um, it's important at the time you choose your project? and uh, and how you choose them uh, because I think there's so many issues uh, probably to deal with or so much uh, art to make that what what's burning when you decide that this is what I'm gonna work on oh, <laughs> sorry that uh, yeah uh, today was presentation I think quite chaotic but I'll... It how it goes. Uh, but you also saw logic, you know, and yeah, and very thanks that you uh, come and did the presentation. And uh, for me, it's really like important question how to choose projects. Uh, but um, when I, uh, I'm really like acting as a. So according to the concept of Gramsci, it's uh, a hegemon cultural hegemony. So uh, I use, uh, there is like, if we mention like art or any like kind of publication, so any kind of publicity as a public sphere. Oh, and there is uh, any place Maria, can we ask you to turn off the microphone? Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. And so, and we... Um, and in this case, we can uh, see that uh, actually now we have this fight against uh, like different discourses, I don't know how to say, different powers or ethics. And all uh, things that I showed today, 
it's very on like periphery. So that's why I think Vladimir invited me that we have, we really like on this periphery of uh, mainstream. So in uh, like whole world, there is a dominance of such issues like we have enough food. Uh, so it's like really like always about consumption. And if you go everywhere, you can see this like advertisement about like chocolate, about like so delicious food or I don't know, KFC and how you feel you're happy when you eat it, I don't know. So, I mean, it's very strong because they have, they spent a lot of money for all this advertisement. And I trying to use uh, any possibilities to speak about these problems and make alternatives. So when someone asked me to make, uh, to participate in our project, so I suggested these uh, topics uh, like that are very like some kind of outsiders in uh, uh, public mainstream. So I'm, that's why I'm not like so select, so great selector. So I usually selecting uh, more concept for particular event or um, publication because I'm try, I'm also try to write some text about this. And yes, there is not so many like selection actually. It's like um, just fighting. If I answer the question, actually. You did, you did. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for the question. Hello. I, <laughs> I'm very glad to see you. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I know that you have been uh, in different uh, countries uh, and uh, what do you think uh, in Kyrgyzstan we have uh, a worse situation with our air or uh, some similar situation with air? Uh, Compared with Moldova I think we have super dirty uh, air because even when I was in Bishkek maybe one week before, I already smelled with that uh, it's like something burning near. And of course, if you go to air visual, you will see. And it's it's now it's really visible. And in Moldova, I don't know. Yeah, I yesterday uh, spoke with the uh, Vela activist Anna Popa and she told that she is very surprising that I'm telling that in Kishinau not so many cars in Bishkek. So it's uh, for you, it uh, sounds really surprising, but in Bishkek, I think it's already like um, we already crashed because we have so many cars and you cannot like just cross. I, I don't know, street. And we have also this, um, uh, someone poise, I don't know, this um, illegal uh, district and even legal as well. They just burning uh, everything with the coil or etc. And I didn't see so much in Kishinau. I mean, maybe not so cold yet now, but and for example, when I was, uh, if we just going to compare, uh, when I was in Serbia last year, it also uh, Belgrade was on the on this rate on one of the first, and it was super weird because uh, you when you go out, you just see the fog, so it's like, and it was like maybe three days like just fog and we didn't actually i didn't know it was also before this action and i actually didn't know about air pollution so deep i mean i knew like hypothetically that um, we're in china and they 
like people i saw this picture that people like wearing mask to protect from air pollution but i never thought that it's possible like just in serbia or in bishkek because we have not so like big uh, issue uh, as in china so and uh, in new york I was really um, surprised, not because air pollution, but because they really like don't have tree, like almost at all. They have this uh, central park, and all trees around. It's like you go on the street, and there's like a pot <laughs> and tree inside. So <laughs> it was like I know some kind of decoration, uh, but uh, trees. It's very like. It's uh, one of the main uh, source uh, protecting from air pollution and anyway protect us from any kind of pollution in city and especially in such big cities in New York. And I was like really shocked because in Bishkek you see like everywhere trees and uh, also we have this uh, Arik we call it like uh, small uh, irrigation system uh, and yeah especially um, uh, micro district in Bishkek uh, they were created in Soviet times it's super great I mean it's super green and it's also um, created with this uh, proportions and using these red lines and uh, green lines Maria, I think you know about this more as an architect uh, and can tell even more uh, about our houses uh, district created. So that's why Bishkek uh, can be really city that super like green and like ecological because if we really like, uh, I don't know, solve this problem of automobiles and garbage it will be really like a uh, big uh, win already for Bishkek I think uh, it's very interesting uh, because many people in our city is uh, our mistake. Uh, many people uh, think that we have very clean air and very clean water, but it's not. And uh, it's very uh, good uh, that you see this problem and you show this problem. It's very, very important work. Um, thank you very much. <laughs> we, we are doing it together now. Yeah. Uh, let me introduce me, uh, Maria. Uh, we are together, like uh, now, co-curating the Bishkek Contemporary Art School. That also like co co collaboration for this event. Yeah, and Maria is she's an architect, and actually she created. Uh, as a like, yeah, like diploma about the her master work, graduation work, uh, the factory of uh, recycling. No. Yeah, factory of recycling. Uh, thank you very much. I'm very happy uh, to be uh, with our uh, school and work together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. I'm sorry for that question. You may have Just asking if you have other things. Um, I, I have a few more questions, actually. <laughs> I hope not to torture you too much tonight. Uh, one is actually is based on your presentation in the sense that it shows that food 
consumption and production is like an industry, which uh-huh. often we don't see food on this industrial, uh, in its industrial mm-hmm. scale. And uh, as any kind of industry, in fact, it's exploitative. And uh, this takes us uh, to many other uh, topics, as you also showed in your presentation. So you connect the industry with exploitation of workers, with exploitation of delivery people, and so on, those who work in restaurants. Do you, what kind of answer can artistic community give to this kind of scale? Because often we try to think in, like we create answers which uh, are not able to deal with such a scale, actually. Uh, and often, uh, and there is this other argument that even if we all, like people, change our habits and start uh, recycling food and everything and uh, saving water and uh, behave properly (laughs) to reduce our own consumption, it will not cancel the issue which is the industry and the the industry which actually is producing like 97, is responsible 95% for all the consumption. So what kind of answer can can we give to this? Yeah. What would be your answer? Okay. So part of the answer will be very big presentation tomorrow. <laughs> but for now, I can say that, yeah, it's true that we have, it's like all production is very heightened. And artists really like can, uh, answer so they can reflect so they can um, also put some questions and also they can so what can answer the artist do they can like imagine and our tool like imagination or the imagination of different things uh, that's why I was really interested that we have um, for example, yes, as Elena uh, told today that she's an industrial designer. And it, I think it's super great to think how in, we, in our conditions, can deal with this. Yeah, and all projects that I showed, it's actually some micro examples how artists can like behave because uh, I can like, be uh, work with some environmental issues and as a researcher because I I, wor- I wrote my master thesis about bike sharing and for me it's like really like research topic but <laughs> I tried to make some drawings or video uh, installation or whatever I don't know that you show and yeah to act like artistic artistically and as I told about like um, this uh, industrial designer, uh, industrial design, for example, it's a um, problem of wasting, not only food, but actually about wasting. When you uh, live in a flat, it's quite difficult to you to make some kind of compost or something, you know. But now it's super. It will be super great for artists and I don't know for uh, industrial designers uh, to try to make some forms or shapes and like techno- uh, put some also with scientists some technology. How you can create something maybe super small? You can like using this uh, size of. Um, uh, garbage uh, can at home uh, but it can be make some compost inside so you just put this organic waste there and it that it will have no smell or etc and you can use this fertilization for your uh, home plants for example so 
how to uh, we should as an artist and I don't know architects thinkers uh, think how make this whole system more autonomic and to reduce this amount of waste that we anyway have and yes I agree that like ninety um, percent is like system problem and it also goes to capitalism. Um, and yes, we, that's why I'm told that I'm really like politically going because you cannot uh, solve this problem if only you uh, separate garbage or trash, for example, because it should be some system and it can be changed only on political level. So, but we can make some experiments and test how it can work and after, because sometimes it uh, really looks like super complicated and needs a lot of resources, yes. And as we are on this periphery, we don't have these billions and really how we can organize everything in our life. Only this like really simple um, decisions, and sometimes, and when we combine it with a political level, it can be even one piece of paper like law, and it's something that really can change. But. But what would it mean to go political in practical terms in Bishkek, in Kyrgyzstan? We just recently saw a tentative of going politically after the elections, which you had one week ago, or, and in what it turned out to be. Like, it does mean to take power and then to redesign the law framework, to introduce new, this kind of uh, changes on uh, and programs on this, like top-down model, how mm -hmm. we see it. What does it mean to go politically in practical terms? It's uh, different layers can be. It's, mm, and it depends on like ambitions and whatever. I mean, if you really want to take a power, okay, you can. And yeah, why not to make another revolution? I don't know that will uh, can. It's it's of course it can be some kind of uh, taking power. You know, this big amount of people, but I don't know. It's for Kyrgyzstan people really like really tired about these revolutions. Of course, we didn't want to have this uh, like fake election and have uh, this dictatorship or I don't know authority of one president. But anyway, we also don't want that we want we have now that. It's only main arc is like very brilliant work of Maria that uh, main argument is power. And now it's like a Rishatka, um, this stones on the street. And yeah, but anyway, it's not like um, quick process. It can be very like permanent process. So you just if you, for example, if you have this uh, spatial place and maybe I know you work with this, but uh, it's one of the layer. It's like political bureaucracy because you always need to go these um, letters, I don't know, to uh, using all mechanisms that actually on public pressure that you have according to the law or illegally, I don't know, it depends on what you agree. And 
Yeah, it uh, also can be support of people who you really like believe. And yeah, if it's like for us, it's even layer, maybe not state, because big politics, it's always, you know, looks like very far from people. But city, it's something, uh, this uh, layer where you can make something. And um, I didn't have so much experience on this, but I really noticed when uh, someone doing something illegally, they're really afraid. And when you make some kind of investigation or research or record or whatever, something that really like really have um, breaking the rules, the person, and you even do not taking it to news or mass media, but also uh, make application to police uh, for this person who broke the law of ecological standards, for example, because today he made some take some bribes and be happy but we should uh, show for everyone that it's not so easy now and you cannot sit in ecological inspection and when there are like different um, i don't know crimes in this year so it's not so easy to continue if everyone will go and write some application for you to police. The system uh, maintain it because we are quite passive on political level. And if we have more person who can, who really feel that uh, and do not afraid to do this, it can slowly change maybe. Yeah, I'm really strict on it. <laughs> I really like, uh, I think uh, it's not like, I think we have this uh, affair from 90s when you really act, you're acting politically and you can be killed. Of course, today it's also possible, really possible. That. But if you have support, I don't know, maybe you will be lucky and <laughs> you'll be not killed, I don't know. But yeah, of course, I, I'm making propaganda, not uh, killing like all activists, of course, but when we have this critical mass who like any like students can do this. So it's, I think it will be another uh, way of living for us. Anyone, anyone else from online community? You said uh, media is very important to be at the the event, uh, and and why do you think so? Uh -huh. Sorry, what do you mean? Um you said a media the, the media it's very important to notice the the art events and the yeah as uh, uh, as i told that um, uh, if if it's like uh, some kind of um, very important issues uh, appearing in art so i think it's a uh, it should be um, highlighted by mass media because our effort, what we are doing, we really spend a lot of time. We like spending all our life. I mean, I'm woke up and I'm really like hard working until the end of the day. And I have super many projects and mass media can just multiply uh, the, this effect because even if for exhibition came, I don't know, maybe how much, 50 person, I don't know, 300, 1000, but with media coverage, it can be much more. That's why I uh, 
really try to attract as much media as I can for our uh, for our exhibitions and projects, and also if I'm asking to write an article about uh, topics on uh, I'm working on, so I always uh, write these uh, articles because they publish it in mass media. And for example, Bishkek Smoke Action, it was like, um, I, I counted ma media coverage and it was like uh, 500,000 um, views or likes or whatever that I can uh, count. And uh, the population of uh, Bishkek, it's like one million. So it's like half of, of course, maybe many people not from Bishkek, but anyway, it's like really like a uh, way to speak a, a bit louder because we really don't have so many uh, resources for our action uh, Bishkek smoke. I spent less than 100 lays like less uh, maybe less so it's like one uh, um, one check in cafe one coffee I don't know mm -hmm. and yeah but media coverage was quite big and yeah and this question of resources is very important for us because as I told, we don't have so many resources. We do not like sponsor it by government or, I don't know, international big uh, corporation. And when you work with such topics, it's uh, sometimes even quite difficult to be sponsored because it's always be censored, you know, because for example, like you know, United Nations organization, do not support my uh, air quality protest because they don't tell. We are not uh, inside the politics. We cannot make any political actions. But I can, and uh, but I don't have a, any like, sponsorship. I don't have even job. <laughs> but I mean, um, in that period, I live just at home, and I, I don't know all uh, resources that I had, like I, I have a flat where I can live and my mom can like prepare some food because, yeah. And uh, yeah, and she, by this, uh, she can like support me, you know, because you always should be quite independent to make, uh, to do with this all topics because if someone tried to, I don't know, to press you financially or like psychologically, whatever, you you should be like quite independent, and that's why uh, such information can appear in mass media, and it's quite valuable. I, I found. Okay. I'll ask the last question. <laughs> uh, we should go to the end and uh, we yes. planned it two hours and we already have two hours, but because we started later, I allow myself last question. Uh, I would like to go back to the language of art. That was my first question. How do we define art in relation to activism, if we differentiate or not? And I just... It, all this conversation made me think if maybe art or rather art education is a sort of filter that makes us see things or like uh, developing in art uh, field we uh, obtain different lenses to look at the world around maybe this is what art does in our context mm -hmm. where we lack schools of contemporary art where we like museums and all this in infrastructure which creates sort of wide audience going to see a contemporary artist maybe for us art is having a different role not so much time spending but like 
looking at things around. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, I call it like critical thinking. Yeah, of course, I totally agree with this. And um, in, in as we in like this contemporary art periphery somewhere in Bishkek, yeah, we have this really like uh, peripheral uh, education because in governmental education in art sphere we don't actually have such position only this contemporary art school and when we had the school of contemporary art uh, with our students this year i think it was super interesting for all of us when we sit together and think uh, together what happens around and what is the role of artists in all this shit <laughs> sorry <laughs> so and yeah, it's, uh, you see that uh, it's something that we can do and we do not like push our students to be like politically active or some whatever they, I mean, but we just was uh, trying to critically think about different things. And yes, of course, it's very important and I think we have a, 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 one special model about art education. Yeah, and it's uh, something that we can push. And it's also very important today, I think, uh, to make it not only like in center, because uh, the other cities of Moldova or Kyrgyzstan, it's also on periphery of these art knowledges or in general knowledges. So my dream to go to Alas or Osh, for example, now, because I feel that uh, there are uh, really like peripheries of this, any kind of access to critical art or any kind of any, like not mainstream culture, because they have, actually no alternatives they have some kind of topsa or state uh, i don't know not even pop art i don't know <laughs> propaganda da. so maybe it's also for you and for us the case da. Um, of course <laughs> i am like a machine of propaganda <laughs> My question is about how do we relate artistic quality? Because usually for me, uh, activity, mm -hmm. like you and activity, sometimes it's uh, uh, direct and uh, some strong message that you already sure about something. For example, and uh, you just explain to people what what you decide like uh, like good or bad. Right? So, so critical uh, decide for me understanding. But what about some artistic quality that is? Uh, what what do you think about this? How how, how it's related? Because. Uh, it's a bit different way, way of effectivity and uh, some. I think, yes, it's very important question about quality because uh, especially when you do a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, I don't know, not mm, so much experience. It's difficult, but I am so happy to work with professionals <laughs> and many my pro I, I not so often do my project alone. So it's always like collective creativity. And when it's like quite big mess, it's even if you if you your work, my for example, not so high quality, I didn't have time or I, I don't know, didn't develop so much my idea in like mm, i don't know in as a total message it's i think 
quite uh, good and I don't know um, maybe of course it's uh, a question always about self-education and etc but I think we are not on the market on art market and so we do not like uh, I don't know in garage museum when you should have or whatever you know in this art every art institutions that you should really care about quality etc for me it's the main thing that you did because sometimes people really like thinking mm, it will be not so good quality so i better do not do this mm-hmm. for me really it's the um, way to not acceptable at all i i always think you just try to do something small and just have, give it uh, to life, give it, but maybe, and you will understand by after, because you will have reaction. And if it's like super great, okay, if it's not, you just make another thing and I don't know, it's always, when, when you have this experience, it's, it's better to develop the idea because my works maybe in the beginning, you saw this dragon. <laughs> it was like <laughs> because it was made from just plastic and coach and now I never use just this like uh, garbage uh, that you will go to garbage. But like ten years ago, for me it was like uh, okay, <laughs> I didn't uh, have was involved to this uh, issue so much and. For me, yeah, it's important that the quality is equal to effectiveness. So, how actually how much effective was this action? Like how much you know, people like influence it? So, it the impact more important than the quality. It's, it's effectivity. It's part of uh, aesthetic of activism art, for example. What is aesthetic? In, in, in critical art, how form aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Of course, it's not, for example, uh, something another that aesthetic and uh, some paints, landscapes. It's some mm-hmm. other uh, rules you, you think about what is um, main, what, what form aesthetic for politic, uh, political art. Mm-hmm. What criteriums of good work of art? Yeah, I'm uh, usually um, do not like. <laughs> oh, for example, uh, I didn't have any course of five years of drawing, mm-hmm. but I made some drawings, and for me it looks really weird. I mean, <laughs> something like children drawing, but okay, but. I can't do, I, I, maybe even I can, but I don't know, I think if if I feel that I need to make really like super nice drawing, I will try, but I actually do not see any sense of it. For me, yes, I using, I can use very primitive drawing, but just to express the ideas. And of course, for example, with comics, uh, you saw that I, uh, Polina Nikitina, she's super professional uh, designer and she made our uh, comics super great. And now I'm trying to use, uh, trying to learn how to use this even t- tape with it. <laughs> so I actually didn't use it before. But I, I'm doing it and for me it's most important that uh, each topic that I put this comics because it's really like for me uh, suffering of these people mm-hmm. and the stories of migrants it's not uh, the, in the mainstream I mean it's something that you never will see like in most of mass media or whatever and yeah for me it's important just to somehow continue and yes I can agree that it's maybe looks not so professional as before and but i used aesthetics that 
I can just produce with all my knowledge and like expertise and I, I'm trying to do my best, but I don't know. So, of course, I'm aware of but for me, it's the first message. Yeah, I'm, I'm not about <laughs> aesthetic, like beautiful, not beautiful, it's not, not about this. How it's look realistic, not because aesthetics is also language. Mm -hmm. For example, if you doing something like comics, it's already in the existence like this form of like comics, some mm -hmm. message. What is comics? From it's like cultural phenomenon, mm -hmm. and um, it's I, I speak now not 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 about uh, it's good or bad, but uh, aesthetics like part of message. Uh, do you develop or not develop? Because you speak not only through words and through some, some, you know, uh, but uh, how, how you speak, it's also uh, your language, not about what about you speak, but how you do it, it's also, uh, it's for me aesthetic. I mean, some Categories that you decide, okay, this is this some symbols with which I work. Mm -hmm. this, uh, yeah, and, uh, because sometimes I see uh, that uh, activism or usually, no, often I can say, take some already uh, uh, forms that exist, for example, in further the left momentary use many capitalistic forms it's okay. for example if, if you criticize something but at the same time you use forms of the something and just put your content um, it's uh, it's a repeating of same things. You just make another color for a uh, same form. So I'm uh, my question about uh, searching of new form of explanation, like uh, new form of propaganda or, or something like uh, like part of our artistic language. Yeah, I understand now. Yeah, that I agree with you that it's. Uh, your language, like identify actually your power relations mm -hmm. with this art institution. That is why I'm not working with the white cubes so much yeah. on the chain, but uh, I, it's like it will be like also a way to speak about uh, this problem, but I'm trying to create this language mm -hmm. as an art experiment. Uh, it's for, for me totally like art. And this article in this paper that I wrote, it's like for me art. And it, it's like, mm, um, yeah, and that's why I'm kind of creating the style how we can really be as an alternative. Um, movement i don't know anyways as, uh, like uh, i don't know uh, about comics it, yes maybe it's taking uh, like kind of emancipation of this comics industry because mostly comics work very commercial now you know and we try to make some kind of alternative but with uh, other practices uh, with some kind of um, like what what we have, for example, uh, waste cooking chaihana. I think it's like totally new language when you can like deal with this topic and issue and art like simultaneously. And yeah, and that's why I really like and um, protest as an art exhibition is also like something was experimenting with languages because it was language but it was not like simple meeting it was really a perfect exhibition on the main square near parliament house yeah. and 
yeah, for me, it was really like something uh, live that really worked because it was attracted by people really uh, like it, this form that was just crossing by and didn't know what is happening. I was thinking actually to contribute to this discussion because this is why I find interesting this question, like what kind of language we, we speak uh, in this kind of situations or uh, in the sense that we are trained a very specific art language in schools that uh, are traditional and uh, based on realist art. Uh, but uh, for the political art, we still didn't develop the language. So I think the process is a little bit vice versa. We start from issues and then an aesthetics emerges around mm. it. And it's not that we start with aesthetics and then we attach to the aesthetics some issue. Mm -hmm. So I think this is our possibility and chance in Moldova or Kyrgyzstan to actually develop an aesthetics which will be supporting the issues. And then it's not just an aesthetics which we sort of see in the West and we maybe like it or kind of, or it is imposed on us because of the <clears throat> huge infrastructure which mm -hmm. allows uh, Western world to impose a language, but an aesthetics which will be based on material uh, reality of our countries and the resources, mm -hmm. as you just mentioned, which you have access to as an artist or as an inhabitant. And this is like uh, our chance, in fact, to go around the traditional schools of art. Mm -hmm. And the question is, which is the laboratory which creates this aesthetics and uh, sorry for not introducing you Bermet from the beginning but <laughs> Bermet is also coordinating artists school of contemporary art now we should get school of contemporary art and now we have two yeah and uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so the chance to like the for me now the question is where this aesthetics can get uh, burned like mm -hmm. where can it uh, start but in which situation? Because we don't have spaces, we don't have infrastructure, we don't have programs for these Sorry. things to happen. Yes, we don't have uh, some shkalat, some categories. Because, for example, in uh, fine art, we, we can say what is good quality, what is bad quality, so on. But, uh, for example, the, the critical art, usually if you critic, okay, it's good, just because you critic. You, you don't uh, see how it's uh, going on, uh, what, what you mod models of critic you use, uh, just, okay, it, it, this guy's uh, against some regime, some, I don't know, problems, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, but, um, for me, for example, aesthetics is uh, somehow some parallel. I, I don't separate what people say and how say. For me, it's part of one, one language. Mm -hmm. uh, um, for example, <clears throat> if we see uh, to Soviet, uh, some avant-gardists, so suprematists, they also work a lot with uh, some strong messages with propaganda, but they have very, they developed uh, language that we still use. They, from from these uh, guys born, born uh, modernism and brutalism and all these uh, uh, strong things. Uh, and, uh, I, I think now also this um, question, uh, if, if for example, we want separate from markets or from uh, some contemporary art sand that uh, exists just inside uh, the, the sterile white cube uh, situation. Uh, just in gallery, uh, uh, it's part of way of kind this aesthetics and uh, um, make it, for example, interesting because without Without this aesthetics, it's not interesting for, for us, for people. Mm -hmm. 
And people do go to, for example, some fancy nice place because they, uh, they already have this uh, like, uh, expectations what is nice and beautiful, but they don't think why, why, for example, this nice and beautiful. They just, uh, from childhood, they know that it's, uh, this is beautiful, I go because it's um, some, you, you see what you expect. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it's a rhetoric question, of course. But I can a bit answer because for me it's also like important uh, the impact on people, um, how if they can like, appreciate, and it's um, this filter that they use it or not. I mean, mm. for example, when I spoke a lot about this waste food, uh, so many people came and said that it's really important, and now I stopped wasting food. Mm. For me, it's, you understand that it's really work, so mm. you're like any kind of different diversity of performances or whatever, they really like, if something turns inside them and they really like understand or believe this and trying to change their daily life practices. And for me, it's important. Mm -hmm. I think we can, we have three more <laughs> like uh, meetings. Oh, I can. Um, maybe then we should stop here. And uh, thank you very much for, for the time <laughs> you spend with us and for sharing your personal experiences. And uh, um, yeah, I invite everyone to join us tomorrow, starting mm -hmm. with six o'clock for two presentations by Clara Abdullah, The Junk Food Revolution Against Food Waste and uh, by Premet Borubayo, Geopolitics and Bol Political Economy of the Food Production. We will be here in Spazio, but you can follow us uh, via Zoom and uh, via YouTube live streaming. And we will be waiting for your questions. Prepare them in advance. <laughs> Thank you very much and have a nice evening, everyone. Thank you also for inviting Hello. and for nice discussion. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Trust her. You see you tomorrow, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it was very interesting. Thank oh. you very much. Thank you. Mm -hmm.